been handpicking talent to crunch it since before I was hired. Nobody laughs. It's a guaranteed burnout project. Zero theorem. All very hush hush. Zero must equal 100%. Good luck. I give him two weeks. Are you here alone? We are generally everywhere alone. You think my dress is incredibly ugly? My dad used to buy me these incredibly ugly clothes to keep the boys away. Only made me want to get naked. Excuse us. Zero must equal 100%. Where is this place? All in your mind. We're safe here. Zero must equal 100%. What happened to you, man? Life, life happens to everybody, all right? The only reason you're not laughing is because you're the punchline. You have made a very big mistake. We don't believe you. Why would you want to prove that all is for nothing? <laughs> Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There's a new Terry Gilliam film coming out, The Zero Theorem, starring Christoph Waltz. I'll be reviewing the film on the Radio 5 Live show I do with Simon Mayo, Friday, 5 Live. But I want to take this opportunity to give you a quick rundown of my top five Terry Gilliam films. At number five, and it's a bit of a weird one, this, Tideland, a film which not everyone likes. In fact, many people actively dislike. It's easy to see why. It's a dark, twisted, strange fairy tale. Very, very hard to feel affectionately about. But the reason I like it is this. Gilliam made Tideland during a break in post-production on the Brothers Grimm. He was shooting the Brothers Grimm for ages and ages, and then he was fighting with his producers, the Weinsteins, about how the finished film should look. They wanted one kind of film, a populist film. He wanted something different. And during that horrible process, he made Tideland, the movie in which all the strangeness, all the weirdness, all the, all the fancy, all the distinctive Gilliamness suddenly came out in this odd little movie. Tideland is a strange film, but I love it because it's the pure brother of the Brothers Grimm. At number four, a very early Terry Gilliam film that he co-directed with Terry Jones, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I love that film for a number of reasons, partly because people of my age tend to be able to recite the whole movie off by heart. It's one of the Python's best works. It also features some fabulous animations by Gilliam. God appearing in the clouds, telling Arthur's knights to stop groveling. I hate groveling. But also, because like so many of Terry Gilliam's films, it's a movie in which you can really feel the dirt, the mud, the rain, the soil. It's a film in which it perfectly makes sense for someone to say, that's the king. How do you know? Well, he's not covered in <laughs> At number three, a perennial favourite, Time Bandits. It's a kid's movie but it kind of isn't. It's a dark fairy tale about a young boy going on an adventure through the portals of time. It's witty. It's historically adventurous. It's got a fantastic underlying theme about good and evil. And it features a brilliant performance by David Warner as the epitome of evil, asking, tell me again about subscriber trunk dialing. <laughs> And two, a remake, which isn't really a remake, it's kind of more than that, Twelve Monkeys. The film is based on a strange short film by Chris Marker called La Jete, which is a series of animated stills, a story told in still photographs, brilliantly reinvented by screenwriters David Webb Peoples, who was the co-writer of Blade Runner, and his partner Janet. The film does what the very best science fiction movies do. It takes an interesting, esoteric, intellectual idea about time travel and yet invests it with emotion. Yes, it's a sci-fi movie, but it's also a heartbreaking love story, a chronicle of a death foretold that is one of Gilliam's finest works. All of which brings us to number one and my favourite Terry Gilliam film of all time. And it will come as no surprise to many of you to learn that it is now and has always been Brazil, a fantastic dystopian fantasy, which at one point was going to be called 1984 and a half. It's an astonishing work. The level of visual invention is really remarkable. It's a fairly cheap film that looks amazing. It uses brilliant locations. Just over there is Battersea Power Station, which takes on iconic status in Brazil. But the thing about Brazil that makes it such a fine work is that Gilliam put his reputation, indeed his career, on the line to get the film released the way he wanted it. He had huge fights with Universal, fights that became so aggressive that he ended up taking out full-page adverts in the trade press, arguing with the studio, demanding the right to show his film the way he had intended. It was a perfect example of a David and Goliath struggle in which David won. To this day, Brazil is widely considered to be one of the 20 best fantasy films ever made. And there's a reason for that. It's a film which is intelligent and inventive, but it's a film in which the filmmaker has invested their heart, their life, their career, their reputation. 
it is, to my mind, one of the greatest films ever made. So what did I miss? What's your Gilliam favourite?